The saturation flow rate is a common input for a variety of traffic engineering analysis for signalized intersections. Saturation flow rate impacts the capacity, and really there's two things at a signalized intersection that we're looking for. The saturation flow rate, and that's the number of vehicles that can pass through a given point on a roadway in a time period with no interruptions, and the amount of green time, or the proportion of green time of the cycle length that you give to a particular movement. So saturation flow is fundamental for traffic engineering related to signalized intersections. A lot of information here, I'm going to set this up and then we'll actually look through an example together. So to reduce the impact from individual vehicles and achieve consistent headways, we want to start with the fourth vehicle in a queue. And we only want to look at vehicles that are queued in our study and in the observation. So we want to record the time between a specific point on the fourth vehicle and the rear axle is common when that fourth vehicle is at the stop bar. And then we want to record the time between either the 7th, 8th, 9th, or 10th vehicle when it crosses the stop bar at that same point, so the rear axle again. So all the vehicles being observed must have been stopped in that queue before the signal turns green. And this is what will determine if it's the 7th, 8th, 9th, or 10th vehicle. So if you have 10 vehicles, you'll do the 10th. If you only had nine, you'll do nine. Only eight, you'll do the eighth. And if you only had seven, you'll do the seventh. If there are fewer than seven vehicles, you can't make the observation because it's the information, the data will not be stable enough. And if it's more than 10 vehicles, you'll just stop with the 10th vehicle. And really that's just a practical maximum so you can observe that the 10th vehicle is actually stopped. Trucks and heavy vehicles and buses can't be included in the observations. So if you have a queue uh, in particular that are the seventh or earlier, you, need, you cannot make the observation if they are present seventh or earlier. But if they were the eighth vehicle, if a truck was the eighth vehicle stopped in the queue, what you would do is just stop your observation at the seventh and then use that seventh vehicle in this in these observations. You also can't do this if you're looking at a turning lane uh, or vehicles that can or a lane that can have turning in it. You wouldn't want to make observations if a vehicle is waiting in particular thinking about a left turn if they're waiting for conflicting vehicles but that's going to mess up the the data or if a right turning vehicle is waiting for a pedestrian to cross uh, that approach then you wouldn't make an observation there so there's there are some reasons why you would need to skip observations in your cycle typically what you'd have is one observer one observer is going to record the saturation flow for one lane at a time and those saturation flow rates that are estimated for a lane usually apply to any adjacent lanes that are of the same type on the same approach. So you wouldn't need to, if you had three through lanes, you wouldn't need to study all three of those typically if they have the same characteristics. You can pick one and then assume that that saturation flow rate applies to the other lanes. We also need to consider the site selection. The factors that are affect Saturation flow rates can include grade, the lane width, the intersection location, whether it's the central business district or suburban or rural location, the type of lane and the presence of adjacent parking lanes. Obviously, you also need to have a substantial enough queue to make these observations. You need at least seven vehicles to make an observation. So if you go on an off peak time or an intersection with very low volumes, you may not actually be able to complete this data collection. Here's an example of a sample data collection sheet. There's important information to put at the top, the date, the location, the time, the observer, maybe other, other details there. And then you'll have a list of uh, a set of rows for your various observations. And what we're trying to record is just the seconds between the fourth vehicle and either the seventh, eighth, ninth, or 10th. You wouldn't do multiple of these. So for each row, you'll only have one entry point and that'll be what you use for the analysis. Our equation for saturation flow rate, given this information, is 3,600, and that's the number of seconds in an hour, because we want to convert the seconds that we're putting in this table into an hourly flow rate. So 3,600 times the number of observations. So if you have, if you filled this out and you had 40 rows, 40 observations, that'd be 3,600 times 40. 
And then on the denominator, we have, we're going to sum up the, each of the columns. And so for the seventh vehicle, that's A, so A divided by three, because there's three vehicles between the fourth and the seventh. For column B, that's the eighth vehicle. There are four vehicles between four and eight. So we take that sum of B divided by four. And for the ninth vehicle, that's column C. So we're going to divide that by five. And for the tenth vehicle, that's the value D. We're going to divide by six because there's six, six vehicles between the fourth and the tenth vehicle. This is an example observation. This is a heavy transit corridor, so it actually took me a while to find a cycle and a queue without a bus in it or a heavy vehicle, and there's also a lot of, of bikes and scooters, so finding one with, with seven or more vehicles in the queue and nothing else was a little bit time-consuming, but I did this, and we need to focus on that fourth vehicle, and we have a queue of eight, and that eighth one was stopped uh, during the red cycles, the red phase, so we can, this is a valid cue that we can make the observation from. So we're going to start with that fourth vehicle, and at the time when that rear axle crosses the stop bar, we want to start the time, and at the time the rear axle of the eighth vehicle crosses the stop bar, we want to stop the time. According to my stopwatch, it was 7.8 seconds. I'll actually attach the the video to the end of this so you can, can see it and time it yourself, but just as an, an example, uh, 7.8 seconds is, is probably close to what the actual value is. And we would want to record this in our observation sheet. Only one value gets added, 7.8 seconds, that goes under the eighth vehicle column. The other columns are empty, seventh, ninth, and tenth. And of course, this is just one observation we would want likely more than 30 observations for this. So it can take some time to find an approach that has enough valid observations in order to complete the table and have reliable enough data to estimate saturation flow rate.